All right, welcome back to DIYDSP.com. In my last video, I was talking about this generator and how I'd added an encoder to it. And this time, we're going to take a look at some of the software on it. So just to remind you, the digital outputs of it come off of this VGA connector. Right, remember those? And then it's got four signals come off of it called... Uh, the positive and the negative of the A and the B encoders. And so I've got those digital signals going to this little nucleo board. I do love these nucleo boards. Plenty of power. Decent Arduino support. Um, pretty reliable. Floating point unit, all that jazz. Reasonably priced. So, I've got the basic, basic program in here. Let's take a look at this. This is the whole entire thing that you're seeing on your screen right now at once. All we're doing is just indicating the four data pins, setting them for inputs, setting up a very fast serial port. I like to use a megabit per second lately. And then we're just reading each of those GPIOs and uh, printing out whether it's a zero or a one. Now if we switch to the console output here, see you've got a long string of zeros and ones. So let's turn the wheel and see what happens. Alright, ready? So we see the zeros and ones are changing. So it's not too amazing, but it at least tells us that we have decent connectivity here. So the order goes um, the positive of negative of the A, or no, it's the two positives of A and B followed by the two negatives. So what that means is they're actually uh, redundant. There's twice as many numbers as you actually need on there, really. But the other thing you could see is if I move this very slow, you could just about make out the sequence. So take a look at the left two columns. It'll go from 0, 0, whoops, 0, <laughs> zero, zero to 1, 0, then 1, 1, and then 0, 1, and then back to 0, 0. Why is that? Because this is an encoder. It's not really a counter. So we have to use some software to make it into a proper counter. So that's what this next sketch is about. So let's close this one. Now one interesting thing is that this chip actually has some hardware in there that you don't even have to write any software for. I mean, um, yeah, you, don't, you just have to set it up and it will do everything that you see in this program pretty much. I have not had time to go through all that uh, configuration. Um, I just wanted to get something going in the, in the nearer term and we'll see, we'll get, we'll see uh, if we have time to hook up that hardware. But this does seem to work well for now. So you have to have like this state table in here. And that says like if we're in, in state zero and we go to say state one, then that means that we've added a phase of one. And there's some other details in the logic. I don't want to get into it too much for right now. But if people are curious, I can go very far into it, <laughs> having spent a few days hacking on this. Anyway, here's the main output. We're going to print out the encoder's position and its state. And then these are um, some variables I've put in there to detect ambiguities in the decoding. And then the counts per second and RPM. So let's fire that up. So the RPM is just like you would expect on an actual wheel. If we're turning this at 1 RPM, then we'd see 1 there. The counts per second is the number of counter transitions per rotation. So this is a 1,000 CPR, 1,000 count per rotation wheel. So we should see 1,000 if we turn the whole thing around. Let's see if that happens, shall we? So compiling this new sketch, even though I have an i9 laptop, it still takes a while to build these one-line, one-page C files. All right, while that's going, I will show this to, to sample everything. I'm using a 40 kilohertz timer. That's set up with the Arduino uh, class's hardware timer. 
So if you ever need just a, a periodic timer to call anything, you can kind of just copy these lines. And I also have a variable here for the report frequency. That's how often it gets printed onto the screen. And so right now I set that for 20 hertz. I don't know if you can, sorry, you can't see that. <laughs> Here we go. This is the report frequency. I'll make, even make the fonts bigger. The, the report frequency is set for 20 hertz. And that's how often it's going to print everything out using this delay logic. All right, so now it's done. Let's open up the serial monitor. And so far, it's mostly zero. So this is the position here in the leftmost column. All right, and note, I painted a little red dot on the wheel so you can see it turn around. So what, what happens? We thought that we would get a thousand counts when we turn it around, right? So we got about 4,000. So why is that? <laughs> it's because each, although there are a hundred um, slits in the disc, each slit causes each counter, I mean each um, LED transmitter receiver pair to go through two transitions. So that means you get actually 4,000 counts. Now one thing to test with this is when you turn around the wheel the complete opposite direction, does this number here end up at zero? So right now the dot's at about three o'clock. Let's turn it there. I got to negative 52. So that's about an 80th of our range or near a percent, right? And if you want to know just how sensitive this is, I'm just barely tapping the thing. These movements, uh, somewhere around 10 times per movement. So getting it centered on zero is, is not quite possible because of the cogging of the motor, I would say, and also some of the hysteresis in the rubber and the tires. But, you know what, I call that good enough. Um, because, let's look over at the RPM column. You see, if we roll this like that, you see it's very responsive. There's no um, sort of filtering or, or smoothing on this or anything like that. So that can all be added later. The point right now is just to have a super high quality sensor. So let's try some experiments. Um, one is, let's, let's do, all right, let's just do the speed experiment now because the next experiment is very boring, <laughs> honestly. So I've got the stick here. Now, as you might recall, this is made for an instrument, a music instrument that's played with a bow. I've got some videos of me playing that. And so what's gonna happen is the stick is gonna slide back and forth and it's gonna touch that wheel. And this encoder is gonna know exactly how fast it's moving as well. And, uh, so let's move this just at a modest speed. Whoop. This is tricky given where my monitor is. But I'm getting it up to about 120 RPMs or so. And so a good thing to try here is let's get the... Well, first of all, we should get back to zero around 3 o'clock again. We shouldn't have lost that position. So I see we're near 4,000. Let's rotate the opposite direction back to zero. Let's see where zero is. I'd say that's pretty similar. I don't know if we've lost a few steps because it, you know, I'm just sort of calibrating this where three o'clock is with my eyes. But like I said, it's pretty good. All right, um, let's try. All right, so what we want to do now is move the whole thing fast and slow and see if the counts still add up correctly. So I'm going to do one really slow movement all the way to the left. I'm going to do three rotations. That should get us to 12,000. Oh, of course, I didn't count on my ability to. Um, hold the stick perfectly. All right, so I can't go. I'm getting like two in a change. All right, so now I'm to go back fast. And then another swipe. And now when I put this around three o'clock, we should be near zero. So I'm, I see about negative 87. So how far off is that? that? That may or may not be a little far off. Again,